Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, this is Karen Newman. This is the Saturday Human Colony Hukula webinar. It is Saturday, the 20th of April, Easter weekend, 2019. And we have in our room, I'll start from left to right, we have Christine, David, Dev, Don, Dalek, Eva, Ian, Jim, of course, Marlena, uh, Michelle, Stephanie, Yad. With a with a big fanfare, welcome, Derek. Who do you have in your room? We have Angie, Barb, Margie, James, Jack, and Ray. Perfect. Well, welcome everybody. And as I said, this is the Human Colony Hukula webinar. This is a paid webinar for a Human Colony uh, club members. So if you would like to join Hukulo Club, you can go to hukulo.org forward slash webinars. And for $10 a month, you can help support the Human Colony endeavors, which means keeping our lights on, uh, taking care of the channelers, the website, the Zoom rooms, the websites, the Facebook groups, everything in between. So, and also to uh, let you know, uh, if, if you do become a Hukulo Club member, you have a lot of access to a lot of announcements and things that just don't go out to the public. So please support us. We do appreciate each and every one of you and, and uh, our heartfelt thanks for all the support we've gotten from everyone here. Um, also, just to do some announcements coming up on the 18th of May, Jim, why don't you talk about your workshop you have? Uh, we're gonna have a galactic energy healing workshop. Takur will probably teach that. And um, it's going to be from two to five on May 18th and May 19th. That's Eastern Standard Time. It's going to cost $111 per person. It's a six hour course. And we had a lot of people ask for it again. So uh, it's uh, we're going to do another workshop. We have people teaching galactic energy healing now in Australia and Europe and things of that nature. So it's really exciting. It's become a a very powerful uh, means of healing. So uh, we're going to do another one and then perhaps a uh, another teaching workshop later in the year, uh, a teacher's workshop for galactic energy healing, where they'll show you the attunements and all that kind of thing. Perfect. So, but this one's just a spiral, non-spiral uh, workshop where you can learn uh, how to use uh, galactic energy healing. Perfect. And how do they sign up for that? Just send, um, uh, Angie, what's your email? Uh, my email is aspeed6456 at gmail.com. And please specify payment for galactic energy healing. So that's aspeed at four five. What is it? Six four five six. Six oh four five six. A speed at six a speed six four five six at gmail dot com. Yeah. And for any of the for any of the things that we're talking about right now, yes, that'll be the email to get in touch. Right. With so you send your money there, the hundred eleven dollars, because she can keep track of that. Yep. And <laughs> it's easier I, for her to do that. Since uh, I have to do the scheduling from my email, so it's good to keep it separate. Perfect. And then also, too, on the 8th uh, 8 through the 10th of August, we have the Ascension Workshop taking place in Rochester, New York. Uh, 8 through 12, yep. And we have a space for 20 people, 22 people, and we're about, what, more than halfway full at this point. Yes, we can. If there's more people that want to go, We'll ex def definitely expand it. So, but okay. we have at least eleven, I think, right, yes, now. right now. Eleven yeah. is so we're more than half full already. But we can actually book more space right. if we need it, and that's that would be great to be able to do that. And so, the cost of that is five seventy five. Five seventy five, and that's for the that includes two meals a day, room and board, and classes. And classes. So it's really a good deal. That's a great deal. And then also they can go through Angie's website or Angie's uh, email there to find out. So, and also they, this place has a restaurant, a bar, a, a swimming pool, pool tables. It's very nice. Not like our very rustic 
uh, workshops before. This one's much more uh, upscale. <laughs> <laughs> bathroom in each room. <laughs> A bathroom in every room, yes. Oh my goodness. And then so, you can also go to hubelo.org to find out more information about the schedule and about yes. everything that's going on and to sign up. And lastly, we have, there's a workshop coming in Canada. And what is it called? It's with Micheline Roche. And it is a, go ahead, uh, Energy. Heart and Solstice. Heart, heart and Solstice. Solstice from heart June 21st to 23rd. Okay. So it is a about galactic energy healing also, actually. And uh, singing bowls and all different kinds of ways for healing modalities to take place so it's not just one uh, looking at one kind of healing modality but actually looking at several different ways to use your talents and skills perfect and that you'll be there it's not just michelin doing oh yes i'll be there I'm, I'm going to be channeling for that and teaching the galactic energy healing perfect and that is <laughs> Quite possibly sold out, but if you're very last twenty five room, yes, yeah. <clears throat> but we are making they're responsible. We can make more room, I think. Uh, I'm not sure. Micheline is in charge of that. So, but if you want to find out about that, please email to Angie because she's the keeper of all the information. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> keeper of information. Keep from yes. <laughs> Why don't we? Uh, some people keep from the code. She's a keeper of the information. Okay, yeah. very good. Okay, so why don't we start with some blessings and we will take it from there. All right, who's first? Uh, I would say Barbara. She's standing up, heading your way. So I'm going to go with her. <laughs> All right, very good. <laughs> Open your eyes and see what is in front of you. Many of you will realize that there is great opportunities for you right before your face because there are those people there that are in need as well as those around the world. Your mission does not only include those that are far away, but those that are very close to you as well. Thank you. Deb, why don't you go ahead and do your blessing? <clears throat> Ayako o na i sai ko ko aita o na i ko o ta sai ta o maya o na i ka ta ta si o to aika o na i ka a to so o maya o ata i so o na i ta a o ka i a so o a ka i ta o maya ka a so i na ya o na ya ka namaste. Your heart overflows with the wanting to help those that are in need. Bring that energy into reality and reach out when there are opportunities. Many of you are just sitting, waiting for people to come to you, but you must go to them sometimes. And that is part of your great mission. Reach out, my friend. Cool. Sorry, and then Angie, go ahead, Angie. Sasa <clears throat> Remember us once again. We are nearby and reaching out to you. We are sending our energy to you and know that you are receiving much of what we are giving. 
We love you and we know that you are rising. We ask for only the best for you. So therefore, be well and know that we are with you. Thank you. So we have some requests. Uh, I'll just read them out loud from the people we did before we went on air, but from the people in the rooms. Uh, it was Pallas Athena, Grindel, um, a seventh dimensional being, uh, the Arcturians, Uriel, Ashtar, and Odin are the... Anyone else? Um, Elijah is not been requested, but mentioned, and Puck was mentioned, but I don't see anyone else. And Jesus, somebody mentioned Jesus. Jesus, okay. Since tomorrow is Easter. Yes, that's true. <clears throat> that's okay. Good. Anybody else out there with a request before we start? No. Okay. Okay. Very good. Well, we'll see you. Have a wonderful um, session today and uh, say some prayers while I do a meditation. And uh, we'll be back and we'll see who comes through first. Perfect. Have a great day. Thank you, Jim. Thanks. You're welcome. This is Ashtar Command. Welcome. We have some information for those of you on the Earth's surface. We notice that there are many of you going through some rather difficult times with what is called ascension. What are they called? Symptoms, ascension illnesses. We have some ways for you to help yourself with these. We see that many of you become depressed or nauseous or uh, there's many different symptoms that people have been experiencing and coming out with. So we have uh, found that if you would Stop when you're feeling this way, when you're feeling extremely fatigued, when you're feeling extremely down or whatever it is that you're going through that you know that is not natural for you. That you stop, close your eyes and check the colors in your chakral system. The earth energies are very disruptive and are dis putting your energy out of uh, proportion, pulling your energy fields out and changing your chakral colors. So make sure when you close your eyes, you are color conscious and know what chakras are going to need brightened. If you need a red chakra brightening, you also need to ground. Many of you are finding that these symptoms are coming from being ungrounded. These earth energies have shaken you out of a grounding position and made you um, less uh, grounded and less able to think properly. When you're not grounded properly, you cannot think properly. So if you're going through a time when your thought processes are very fuzzy, then check your grounding. And also check um, and just close your eyes. And if you give yourself uh, a moment to brighten your own chakras, 
to give that a, a, a chance to work for you, you will find that you will feel much better. You will close your eyes. Some of you will be able to see the problem immediately. Whatever color comes to your mind first, write in that chakra the first. And then I would actually go and take my hand and move it up the body from down to up and uh, skim over the chakras because the chakras are not inside of you, but they're outside of the body. They are not. They are energy fields that are outside the body. So take your hand outside the body, move it up, and let those the energy of your hand brighten these chakras so that you can have a better day, feel less nauseous, feel less tired, feel less depressed, whatever it is that you are going through. So is there any questions about that? Is there, there is a question here. So, I'm going through a lot of those symptoms right, symptoms right now. Exactly. So I said something about grounding. I ground myself every morning. But Very is good. That, is that helping the way I'm grounding, connecting to Mother Earth's core and spreading it? Yes, grounding will help. But also, if your chakras need brightened, this will help give you more energy. You, a lot of people are finding that the earth energies are draining their energies away. And that is because their energy field is di disrupted, their chakras are disrupted. Ground and move your hand up, up through the chakral system. You'll feel the energy with your hand. It'll tingle just a little. You can do that with yourself. And you don't need anyone nearby. You don't need to do the choku ray or anything of that nature or any kind of symbol. But your the energy in your healing hands will help just slightly brighten those chakra colors. And actually, you can stop and say red, orange, yellow, green, and give them just that little bit of energy that they need to help you get that extra strength that you need for the day. Some days are better than others on your planet. And so therefore you may not have to use this every day, but you may have to bring yourself into a, a better uh, energy field because everything is so shaken with the grand solar minimum and many of the other things that are happening on your planet. This, the very disruptive weather, the very disruptive earthquakes and volcanoes, these things shake uh, Mother Gaia, and she is disturbed by them. So you must help keep yourself into alignment. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Marlena has a question. She says Marlena. it requested, requested you. Yeah. Greetings. Greetings. Is this, is this Corton speaking? This is Corton. Pleased to speak with you. Um, can you give us an update? Um, actually, I want to thank you for speaking about the uh, the chakras and what we're going through. Um, can we? Can you give us an overview of the Earth chakras and what's going on, especially now with? Um, um, yes, I understand what you're saying. You can read my mind. Thank you. Yes, the the Earth chakras are disrupted, as you can see. But there's more to it than that, as you, as you already know. Yes, this, the Earth is. Uh, being changed, the chakra system is being uh, upgraded through uh, through this period of time as well. Not only are the chakras going to get stronger and have greater energies for the body, but they are also uh, going to shift a little bit because it is necessary for this time in evolution 
you will find that the throat chakra especially will become a greater uh, activity, will find greater activity. Um, I am not sure all the things that you are aware of. We are not supposed to point out a couple of the things yet because that's for the future and we need to keep some things uh, for later. But I see that the chakral system is changing and evolving with humanity. Is there any other question about that? If you need to ask more questions about that, please do. You mentioned the, uh, the two chakras that you mentioned. So yeah. for our audience, can you tell us where, where they are located on the planet? Oh, the chakras, the heart that you spoke chakra. about. Yeah. Yes. The throat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, where they are located on the earth. On the earth, yes. Well, I know the heart is on the Hawaiian Islands. The brain is in the Iceland area. It it has a great deal of the thought process. The vocals have they have moved since the last time i have checked one moment i believe they're in south america is that what is on your mind as well yeah they there it is hard to keep track of all the different things that are happening with this particular age in humanity but it is that it is important. The root of uh, the root chakra is the center of the earth, but the, it is also reaching out to the, the, the different poles as well. So the root chakra is in Antarctica at this moment. Is there any other questions? Could you mention where the throat chakra is, please? Because you um, specifically talked about this uh, chakra. Well, yes, I did. Is that the vocals you're talking about? The, the vocals that move to South America? Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And it is, it moved from uh, Thailand to South America, the voice of the ascension. Is that what you're thinking? I know that that is true. The thing is about that is that there is still a lot of the voice still in Thailand. But the voice also is becoming stronger and stronger in the South American areas and will take over that completely at some point. It is uh, that it's getting stronger, but the reason why it hasn't completely moved there is because of the earth energies. And it's safer on the, in the higher elevations. And so the higher elevations of South America is also where the voice is as well. So you have the voice moving to the higher elevations of South America. Is, can we say that this is uh, related to the solar disk in that area? Yes, you can. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Is there any chakra in Japan? A chakra in Japan? No, there is not a chakra in Japan that I know of, but there is a lot of energy there. And it was disrupted with the uh, the earthquake and the meltdowns, and so there is there is a great amount of confusion coming from there, a great amount of disorientation in the Pacific Ocean because of it, and the people of Japan are in those areas are also somewhat disoriented because they have a lot of earthquake activity and they feel uh, shaken more than many of the other places on your planet. And so they really are very, they have become very angry. That, that's the emotion that is whelming up in a lot of the 
uh, Oriental people, the Asian people, is that the anger is there in that area because they feel so disrupted and feel so shaken and many things are happening there and plus they also have the greater work ethic working 12 hours a day and things of that nature they're they're just wearing themselves out thank you thank you are there any other questions for ashtar Yes, hello. Yes. Uh, I am Catalin. Uh, hello. Um, greetings. Greetings. Um, do the polls will affect those, uh, the moving of the polls will um, affect those chakras? The moving of the polls did affect them, yes. Absolutely. The polls have not moved uh, a great deal, but they have moved enough to change everything about the earth energies. You have to understand that if you as a body, consider yourself your own body. If your energy field were to shift in any way, it would affect you. You would feel the tired, the drained, the, the there would be a lot of different changes within your body. So imagine the earth is, has moved out even 10 miles off the axis. This would absolutely uh, change the all the different effects that happen on her and how she's feeling and the movement of the tectonic plates, the movement of the lava, the movement of the actual internal organisms of the earth. And that affects everyone on it. I saw I saw a map of like um, the global map where it was mentioned that uh, in few years Antarctica would be actually in the place of the west coast of uh, North America. You mean uh, in the shift bolts? Yeah, the, in, the, in the bolts. relationship to the sun. Uh, yeah, I mean the the poles will shift in that way that North um, um, yes Antarctica it, will be actually on the west coast of North America. Yes, this is if um, they allow it to happen, but most aliens, or I should say, most alliances. I, would, I won't say aliens as a singular because a lot of the alliances are watching the poles on your planet and trying to keep them in place so that there is not a complete polar shift. Now, the, what they're seeing is that we are holding the poles into place, but they are still shifting. And the, the revolution around the sun has also shifted and is in a slight warble. And that is also affecting how things, how the seasons are and how the weather is. If you're noticing the uh, a lot of cold days and then some really very warm days and then back to cold days and then some very warm days, it's, it's like it's not properly uh, oriented like it used to be. So therefore, there is many things that are not right at this moment about the Earth. And we as alliances, federations, and things of that nature are trying to help put things back into a more normal status. It's not easy, but we are holding the axis at bay so that it does not shift anymore. Your scientists are correct. If we would allow it to move, that is, it would actually uh, happen that there would be a complete uh, polar shift and the Southern hemisphere would be in the Northern hemisphere. And that is what, you're, uh, what they are seeing. It's actually a little even more dramatic than that. But 
that is what they're seeing with us holding it into place. So, and it's still shifting slightly because it's it's very difficult to stop a planet from moving um, from from its axis. But we have maintained it with the help of others. Is there any uh, other questions? Is that yes? Is that, yeah. Yes. yes um, how long you uh, it will um, be? Um, how long it will take to have a complete shift? <laughs> it doesn't take long for the poles to actually shift. If we would allow it to do so, it would only keep, take a few days. But it would also lower the planet population significantly. And with animals and insects and all the, the whole thing would be totally changed. Now, I'm not saying that everything would be uh destroyed completely but it would be like starting over again in many ways you know, the cities uh, many cities would be leveled the air moving across the planet uh would be so harsh it would it would just uh be like the worst weather uh, like having hurricanes everywhere all over the planet uh, but I can't even describe it because that doesn't even do it justice. But the thing is, it would be like an elimination level event, but not quite. Uh, it wouldn't quite uh, eliminate everyone. There would be survivors. But still, it would be a time where you would not be able to uh, be a part of the galaxy. It would be a time where you're set back a hundred or hundreds of years actually and so we don't want that to happen we want you to become uh, a part of the neighborhood in the galactic sense and so therefore we do not want to allow this to happen we want to find a way to keep it from happening and when you have the technology in your hands eventually we want you to uh, absolutely stop it as well but right now we are doing it, but uh, because you cannot be trusted with that high of technological energy. You just cannot be trusted with it at this time. And so we have to do that for you right now. This is something that we can do for you because it is not, well, it is not uh, something that you're doing to yourself. We as, Ashtar Command are not as involved as some other federations. We prefer not to have hands-on with your with your world and people as much as some other federations and alliances such as Gurkvik Nir. We, we stand back. We do support the fact that they are holding the axis in place. But I, I, I was saying that we were helping, but it, that is not really true. We are, no, we are hands off when it comes to your planet. Thank you. Uh, um, so I still don't understand. Uh, is it's going to be held in place like for a long time? Or? It has to be permanently held in place at uh -huh. this point because your world was noted for every several hundred thousand years doing a flip. And, and with that flip, it wipes out most of the population, the civilizations, things of that nature. And then you're like starting over again. Oh, okay. It's, it's a very difficult time. And so it's, it's been a few hundred thousand years since that's happened. And look, civilization has come this far. And it is a wonderful thing that you have come this far on your own. And we feel, as Ashtar Command, that you should maintain it on your own as well. But you cannot be trusted with the uh, energy that it takes to hold the planet into place. So Gurkvik Nir is doing that. They're holding that axis into place. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, Marlena has a question. Go ahead, Marlena. Yeah. 
Yes, my question is, you uh, mentioned that you were hands-off concerning the access and some of the work. Can you expand on the areas that you are involved in, please? We are involved in communication. We are involved in information. And we are involved in teaching. This is where we feel that the greatest amount of energy should be given to Earth at this time. You know that we have, uh, have given our energies to communicating with the Earth, teaching it and making it, helping it to evolve in a positive way so that they can handle their own problems. That is where our main function is. We feel that it is most evident that you need the education that we have to give. And it is coming to the world in many different ways through our uh, mm, energy. Do you see that? Totally. Thank you. And that is where our outreach is with humanity. We give information and um, teaching and communication. That is what we're doing right now. And so with that, we help humanity rise. But we are hands off because we feel that we cannot with any moral uh, acclamation be involved in any great in any great in any greater way do you feel that your ground crew is uh, working hand in hand with you and if there are areas that need strengthening can you tell us a little bit about that yes the ground crew First of all, you you realize that the ground crew has been grandfathered in for a long time, and it is not something that is new uh, from us. But they have been there in a for a very long time and are doing some very important work in that in the ground level at the ground level. And yes, they need some support because. Uh, the political climates have changed and the thoughts of how to do things have changed. And so the way that they have to uh, do their work has also changed a great deal. However, they're very adaptable and they have been very good at moving to the right places at the right times. We do need some reinforcements. We would love to be able to send more to the ground crew but it's not allowed at this time. The permissions have not been granted and for, for good reasons. There are places such as um, the Falkland Islands and Australia where most of the activity with uh, UFO sightings has been uh, found, but uh, we have done a lot of work in these areas to uh, bring uh, first contact thought processes into view and into uh, understanding. And that is another one of the areas that we are working for is to pave the way for first contact and bring the information to the people as easily as possible and as uh, uplifting as possible in, for the human race. Now, uh, there's the exopolitical version of all of this, which is out here, which is the governing force for those that are on the planet that have been gr grandfathered in. And yes, they are, they, uh, the missions have somewhat changed, but they are still moving forward with the Ascension program, with the energy programs, and with the bringing forth of alien understanding. Thank you. New Zealand is next door to Australia. Correct. 
there has been a change in the culture web. Yeah, I'll put it in those terms. Um, how can we support um, that change in a positive way? That is, you just must uh, find um, a positive activities for them. The thing is, growing pains are difficult. They are going to have to do, uh, they're going to have to go through the growing pains of change. It's, it's no different than any other time in history when changes come, there are growing pains and people will revolt and, and people will accept. But before they accept completely, they will question, they will, they will want to uh, get rid of it completely. They will put it down, but I believe that the very fact that we allow them to go through this, it will be successful. We will be sending energy to it. Please send your energy to this change because it is actually a very positive change in the, in the long run. And we will send energies to it as well. But of course, some growing pains are always necessary when this kinds of change happen. Yes, because from my perspective, some parts are, are like a takeover. Yes. And um, that's a little bit more, or another challenge to deal with. It, let's put it, it is. It's, <laughs> it's not really a takeover in um, aggressive uh, terms. No, of course not. But it is a takeover of thought process. Yes. And so therefore, whenever there is a thought process takeover, there is, there is, that is the greatest amount of questioning. Their mental state is in unbalance at this moment. And when we came through and talked about the chakras, that is a place where they definitely need to check chakra colors every three or four hours because there's so much turmoil there but it's mental yes. and um it, it is going to pan out we see but of course the struggle is there still hmm. Thank you um, to you and the command for coming today. Well, on my behalf, welcome. thank you very much. It is our privilege and honor to educate and give you communication whenever needed. And we feel this education or information that we've given today will help people to do their missions in a greater way balance themselves in a greater way with the energies of this planet that have been knocked out of perspective by many different things the wobble the axis the uh grand solar minimum the center of the galaxy energy the the energies from seventh dimensional positive and negative beams so so much is hitting this planet all at once that we do need to give some guidance on how to keep your perspective and how to keep your understanding in line with all these different uh, changes and uh, fluctuations. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, we have several questions from the chat. Um, I'll start with the question from, uh, I guess it's, I don't know who this is from, but it says, will the human body in the future ever have any upgrades? Absolutely. Towards physical attributes such as speed or strength? Right now the body is weak and slow. Yeah. The physical body is always changing. Uh, and evolving because of what is there with you. As your sun becomes dimmer, then your body will change to, to 
uh, accept that as as your intellect changes and more information comes your mind will change to include that there is so many kinds of energies in that uh, are involved with these changes that the brain will catch up is speed one of these changes I could, could never tell you I cannot predict your evolution exactly because it's a probable evolution from this point what other things are going to happen when um, when first contact comes how will that affect evolution when you become friends with the universe how will that affect you evolution when you are when great uh, catastrophes come to the planet how does that affect evolution so you have all these different factors that some natural some unnatural that will be affecting the evolution of mankind in the near future so we do not know how you will react to some of these incredible changes and yes it's it's your evolution is inevitable but which way will it go some people will head one direction and some will head a different direction because this is the the way that the mind and the energies of the mind work they go in the directions that they see most logic most logical for them at the, that very time and so with logic and self um uh what is the word you just your own logic and your own understanding of what is going on around you in the world that affects how directly you move up sideways or down thank you um i, I have something to add on that if it's possible um, sure. i was watching a show yesterday with uh some bodybuilders talking and they bodybuilding is a very scientific sport because it's a balance between fitness and also uh, supplementation with steroids and trying to get the body to do certain things. And one of the questions was, what did they see for the future of bodybuilding? And one of the, the trainers who is a scientist said, what they expect to see is over the next 10 to 20 years, a, a, a big increase in smart type of medicines that allow the manipulation of the genetics um, to such a degree that they will be able to build more muscle, increase the speed of people, and increase an um, output of athletic performance in a very predictable way, in a desirable way. So quite possibly the evolution is not necessarily going to be in the physical body, but well in the technology um, that allows the physical body to be altered in such a way that it will be able to... Uh, Per, outperform what it does now. So I just thought I'd share that. It just Very happened. Much. And also, your governments will prov will either allow this or not allow this. Right. And, and they will give you uh, limitations on this as well. So remember, your governments will come into these decisions. Right. And they will stop uh, some people from using these and they will uh, enhance others to use it so your governments are very manipulative and uh, you will find that a lot of these things as the mind works and pushes forward to understand your existence and where to go in the expansion of your existence the government will also have an idea of how to manipulate that existence for their own personal gain yes okay perfect thank you for that uh let me see uh, the next question is uh can you elaborate on the catatumbo lightning is it an atmospheric phenomena in venezuela catatumbo lightning i am not aware of um exactly that the name of it is this the lightning that is starting fires and things of that nature? This I don't know. This was uh, maybe Lilypad can uh, it's for a question from the chat, so maybe she can answer that. I question. am I am not fully aware of that since it's localized. Okay. I'm more aware of whole uh, planetary 
uh, information rather than localized information. So, but uh, I will look into that. Okay. Um, the next question is from Trinity. She wants to know if first contact will come before ascension. That is a very good question. I think that hand in hand, they will work together because if as, uh, does it matter which one comes first? I don't think so. I think that ascension is something that will bring first contact immediately if it happens first. And first contact will bring ascension immediately afterwards if it happens first. Chicken and the egg. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Uh, there's a question from Hubert. He says, uh, is it possible to go past the speed of light and how? Well, I can't tell you the algorithm for how, but it is possible. The reason, the way that you can go faster than the speed of light is to avoid traveling that way. You can fold space and time and bring this part of space to this part of space in, and there is no space in between. So therefore, you are moving faster than the speed of time, but you actually are not moving more than an inch or two in, in actual space. Now, when you talk about space and time, you're talking about something that is interpreted differently by every species and every intellect. So as you speak about space and time and speeds, it is all relevant to that particular species and how they look at it and what they've learned about it. Your particular peoples, know that uh, gravity and light can bend. And so those two things are the two things that go through all dimensions, gravity and light. For, for not everything is common to every dimension. So as you talk about moving into space and time, you must also talk about moving dimensionally and portholes and things of this nature. So you can open up a porthole from in one place and have it move uh, techno technology-wise to another place, and they can move through that porthole just like that. Mm -hmm. And that is a different way of actually moving uh, faster than the speed of light. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of bending and jumping. Bending and jumping, yes. Okay. You can do many things to move beyond. It, there's many tricks in the universe to go faster than you can possibly imagine. Perfect. And so, actually, yeah. you're not even moving fast at all. You're just stepping from one realm to another. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, there's a question that says, does your ground crew need any help? People in the chat are willing to volunteer and help you. On the uh, yes, please send energy to all the different federations and alliances and those that are trying to help your planet because we are here for your most positive good. Perfect. And then there's one last question that says, uh, are, are, there, are there alien races that are based on something that isn't carbon? Of course there are. Um, there are many different species there are that are not based on carbon-based human units we have silicon units you have uh you have actually sulfur based units you have uh let's see what other ones that i can you have nitrogen you, oh nitrogen and helium and hydrogen based unit as well Yep. So there are many different uh, bases for life because mm -hmm. God can make anything sentient. God can make anything sentient. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Even a metal wall, he can make sentient if that's what he so desires. Right. 
All, everything is consciousness. So, okay. Um, Pamela asks, or she says, there's many triangular craft being seen worldwide. Are yes. most of these ours? Or are they off-planet craft? They're mostly off-planet because uh, we have uh, noticed that your secret space program was working with them a decade ago. Mm. They, they backwards engineered those more than a decade, probably two decades ago, and are no longer interested in the triangular craft, but they're interested in the cigar-shaped craft. <laughs> those are the more advanced ones, and so now they are backwards engineering it, those that are considered more advanced. So what your triangular craft that you're seeing is mostly off-world craft because your your uh, governments are no longer interested fully in it mm. and, uh, it's uh, uh they want the newer version of it and they don't have it <laughs> okay all right um that's all the questions i have in the moment oh uh, there is a question in the room perfect do our governments or all governments have um, knowledge that outside forces are holding the access together to prevent it from further? Yes, they have been told whether they believe it or not is another thing. You have many of your world leaders that uh, refuse to believe such things and believe that that is just a, uh, something that uh, we are saying out here to get their attention or to to manipulate them in some way but manipulation is not what we are up to so uh yes there are many that know they all know about it in some way they just do not want to uh deal with it if we're dealing with it they're fine with that Okay. Michelle has a question. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi. I was wondering about um, kind of like dark and light, high vibration, low vibration, good and evil, whatever you want to call it. Um, and is, is kind of balance the yin and the yang in all uh, creation or is there some that's just light? <laughs> yes, I, I understand the question. Most things have a balance to them so that they can exist in, uh, in a, the material world. Listen to me, to me carefully because this is more of a physics question. Uh -huh. um, the even though you're talking yin and yang, you're talking about uh, uh, algorithm, algorithmic balances between uh, light and dark. And there are differences in those things. And, and for things to exist properly in this realm, yes, they must be balanced. There will be those that are extremes, but they are balancing out the universe in a way that keeps it stable. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, my question though, um, the reason I was, or I, I keep pondering, and I've been thinking this for a while, is that like everything that I was, have been afraid of, or, uh, you know, the darkness, whatever, whatever it is, I think I have a moral prerogative to judge. <laughs> <laughs> or I used to feel like I had a moral prerogative to judge, I, I should say. Because I, it's my theory that we have to have the dark. So, um, but quote unquote light workers are always working toward one end and then, but we actually need the balance. So we have to have the gross and ugly also, at least in third dimension, it feels like. I don't know, is that true? <laughs> Yes, in third dimension, balance is necessary. In other dimensions, it may not be as necessary as it is here. This is like your root chakra dimension. 
where it all things are basic and uh -huh. all things even though they are not basic to you when you learn of the physics of this particular realm it is the basic realm so or it is balanced in a very basic way the other the other um dimensions are not necessarily balanced in the same way because they don't need to be so is earth balanced or is it more tipped one way than another currently it's currently uh not balanced okay that is why i talked to you about uh, the chakras and i talked to you about the energies and i talked to you about many of the things that are happening on the planet it is not really balanced right now no but no, i came in late so i missed that i'm i'm sorry i'll 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 re-listen to that oh very well yeah um, balanced okay so but I, then i was having another conversation and i was like but all of it's god like it okay if you just go through teachings of any and all ideas i mean a lot of times or this is my theory anyway i mean all of it's god even the gross even the ugly even the painful even the harmful it's all god <laughs> it will all, it is all assimilated by his energy yes so for us to judge i don't know it's it's kind of a tricky widget i think for a lot of us listen carefully okay God's energy penetrates through all areas of the universe, dark or light. And so he will assimilate it and bring it into a balance eventually. But he allows it to be the way it is for a reason. The reason is for learning. He is learning about it as much as you are and bringing you through it as much as he is understanding it in greater and more incredible ways than you can possibly imagine and to understand it is not necessarily to condone it but it is to let it be what it is for the time being so for people like say every day i send love to the planet to the waters to every heart or whatever with reiki and stuff like that um uh is that necessary i mean is it necessary that like people do that so we can kind of keep things more balanced you will never as a as civilization be able to balance yourself oh yay do you understand <laughs> what i'm saying that we're gonna annihilate ourselves no Okay. That is what I said. I said you'll never be able to balance yourself as okay. a civilization. Mm -hmm. Balance comes from uh, from the outside. You will only be able to balance yourself with the understanding that God is your equilibrium. Mm -hmm. As a human, as the substance that you are, as the energy that you are, you are erratic beings and you will act erratically and move into erratic uh, cultures and subcultures and behaviors. Even those of you that are considered normal have idiosyncrasies and imbalances. Therefore, the only way to bring yourself into true balance is with uh, the God and the spirit that you understand as very even and unfluctuating when it comes to its essence. So is it true for, um, okay, say for a person like me, um, like I don't watch the news and engage in that kind of stuff. So every, if I hear something, it's always a surprise and then people, who watch the news 
like I, my neighbor told me it's my civic duty to watch the news. I said, well, I feel a lot better on my insides when I don't. <laughs> well, the thing is, the news has been manipulated. So right. to watch the news is not to watch all the truth. You will get exaggerations, modifications, and sometimes downright lies. Right. But there will be truth intermingled among it. And hopefully, if it's a good place, a good show, 75% uh, will be positive truth or correct truth, I should say. Well, what I'm, what I'm asking is, is it necessary for me as a human citizen or a human on this planet to know what's going on around the world? Or should I focus, is it okay to just focus on oneself and what one knows to send energy to? That's, exactly. that's a moral question almost in some ways. It is for you to decide who you truly are and what you truly need to do. Mm -hmm. I am not subscribing you to do anything that you right. do not feel like you should do. And mm -hmm. someone tells you that it is your obligation to do one thing, I would question it if it's not part of who you are. Well, that's not true for me, but I did think it was curious because I really don't know. And um, Be yourself. You must find within yourself your true essence. That is the only way you will be happy with the world around you is to be who you truly are within. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. You may say that louder if you wish. Anything so, you do or not do will self-define you. Yes. Whether you watch the news or not watch the news, you will be self-defining you. Yes, you define yourself. Thank no you. one else can do that. Thank you. That's okay. Perfect. Uh, David has a question. Go ahead, David. David? Hello. Uh, the mute button it took a second. Hello. Thank you for all your help uh, with the polls and um, keeping them from shifting. And I wanted to ask to send healing to you uh, some um, where exactly can I direct this healing to help you and the crew and and I wanted to, I've been sending healing while you were speaking and I wanted to have more guidance on exactly where pretty much wherever you point yourself to the sky we are here <laughs> because there are so many of us here one of us will take the energy if not all of us share it <sighs> Okay, yeah, I just said where, where, wherever, wherever it's needed is was my guidance. To All send right, it. if you look toward Orion, we our ships are in that direction. Okay, so directed to Ashtar community or something like that. You cannot send an email; just send the energy. <laughs> 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 okay, but I, you know, my my intentions for so my thoughts. Yes, I understand. We are grateful for them. Okay, yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Much love to you. Much love to you as well. Um, I believe that's all. The well, actually, there's another question. Uh, it says, um, "Do aliens know?" And forgive the word aliens. Do our extra dimensional friends know? what memes are and do they think memes are funny memes memes would be like the cartoon versions of extraterrestrials oh. put in different funny situations uh, first of all let me say that we don't mind the term aliens okay. because that's what we are um we don't mind the term because it's not uh, uh condescending mm -hmm. it is actually the truth Right. If you were saying aliens in a very condescending way, then we would be upset. But you aren't. You're trying to be as friendly as possible in whatever terms you used for us. So just a, cor a correction there. The other thing is we have a sense of humor as well. Okay. We understand humor and humor 
keeps things in balance. You must not have too much seriousness in order to survive in a happy way. How are you going to be your true self without having a good time and laughing about some things? If you are not truly yourself, you will not laugh, perhaps. But if you are truly yourself, humor is part of the balance of your being. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Um, we don't have any other questions on this side, unless there's another question in the room. Uh, we don't yes. have any questions. Yes, hello. Oh. Hello, there's someone there. <laughs> One has yeah, it's a uh, it's Catalin again. Um, I have a uh, like a technical uh, question. Um, under what circumstances, uh, resonant circuit like let's say electronic circuit, under what circumstances, the spirit will bring, uh, back into it, a bigger energy than it has been inputted. Uh, he will bring back that energy with information, but that that information is coming very shortly. And the algorithms for that are also on your planet already. The matrix is also already bringing you the information that you need in this area and will be captured by those that are able to understand it. There are many humans on your planet reaching... Uh, realms of understanding that the matrix will soon use to change technology and change the way things are done on your planet but as of yet the this matrix these algorithms are still floating around unused by humanity at this time does that make sense to you um i actually uh ask if let's say if we have a, a resonant circuit with let's say with a coil or a capacitor oh, yes uh, if this circuit um, um, gets into a resonance yes. i know that it can uh, bring back more energy than what it has been input correct and, and i know that um uh, we can have more energy that we put in the circuit because the spirit actually answers. Correct. It, it brings it brings more energy uh, back, so we can have like a free energy device. Absolutely, so, you're correct. So my question is under. I'm trying to understand how uh, how to how what is free energy and uh, how to actually. Uh, build a device and how we can use uh, <laughs> and and actually I answered that question um, that the information on how to build that machine is is in the air and there there are those that are coming to tr to teach it very shortly and mm -hmm. uh, actually what I, I did hear the question correctly originally it's just that my answer was a little vague um, the thing is the black boxes that Tesla built that could sustain energy for a hundred years in a household, that kind of information is returning and will be with you very shortly. And this information is in the matrix right now. Uh, there are those that are coming forth that will bring that information to the earth, but not quite yet. Uh, it, they would be shut down right now by the governments if they were to start to bring that information forward at this time so it has to wait till there is an opening for it so um i if i want to build one and i yes. don't do you have a technology a technological mind do you have that kind of thought process well, I have self-awareness and I have a, a, a background in electronics. Well, you may be able to build something of this. Keep your mind open for the algorithms and the matrices to come to you for helping the world to become more efficient energy-wise because the matrix is looking for those minds that will understand 
the information that it has to bring to this planet. You have to understand information is all through the universe, comes to this planet all the time, but is not always absorbed because the minds of mankind are not ready for it yet. Um, I, I strongly believe that this kind of information should be obtained by people of true life and people who actually work with themselves uh, and Absolutely. understand how they work. Uh, it, I'm, will I'm, be, it will always be given to the right person. Yeah, because I'm seeing a lot of people, um, some the people who actually uh, have some technology like this, they actually don't know what to do with it. And they go blind and it, it it's kind it's kind of somehow in a self destructive way. Um, trying I, to. Do I think I understand what you're saying. It's it may appear to be self destructive, but it is actually the beginnings or a foundation of something else. Someone will take this foundation and and use it. So it will be uh, it will be uh, useful in the future. So it's not destructive necessarily the actual information and the actual uh creation can be used later and for greater means mm -hmm. good great i i i like uh, your answer thank you very much you're welcome okay thank you so much i do not think that we do have any other questions i've said that before but i think that that's correct <laughs> at the all moment. right all one right. more one more question. Then someone else yes. must come. Does Jim need some water? Ah, Jim needs some water. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Welcome. I, I, I'm glad the Ashtar Command is able to uh, step in and make sure Jim gets some water. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go for now. It's been a pleasure to speak to you all. I hope the information that I have brought edifies your thought processes and edifies your world as a whole so that is something that we truly are out to gain is your your understanding and give you great uh understanding from our perspectives thank you very much it was very nice of you to be here thank There's you someone, uh, at least several more that want to come but i think your time is limited Greetings. This is Jesus of Nazareth. Greetings, Jesus. Welcome. I have come because the season requires it almost. But I don't have much to say except be well, be happy, and find a great joy in the season. Find a great joy in your family. Find great joys in your friends. Find great joy in the atmosphere that may not support great joy. This is a time for differences to be mended. This is a time for life to be uplifted, for it is a renewal period. It's a time for great energy, a time for great understanding, and a time for healing. Not only the physical kind of healing, where you can touch and become a great healer for others, but mental and emotional healing as well. And I think that is the greater of the healing for this season. Many of you have those that you cannot get along with or those that you feel that you are, that you no longer can communicate with. 
This is a time for forgiveness for yourself and for them. And it may not be that you will be able to immediately reconnect or, or bond, but it is a time for a new beginning with how you look at that situation. Look at it differently if you are no longer seeing it as a positive. You must bring it around to a positive thought process and start to heal it within yourself first. And as that healing is complete within you, it moves out into the world and you are a healer as well in more ways than you were originally. How many have a question? Are there any questions in the uh, room? It is self-evident that healing is this season. Mm. Ava has yes, a question. Hello. Yes. Kathleen, you need to wait. Hi, hi, Jesus. Uh, thank you for coming to talk to us. It's I almost hesitate to talk because personally I do have Although I know how amazing, loving being you are, but at the same time, I, I, I also feel injured by um, Catholic religion I grew up. So um, my question is, you came to help and move humanity forward into state of love, but many used, basically used kind of manipulated your teachings into harming a lot of people, which is still going on. Um, can you can you say, is there any chance that you come back and... I am already on the earth. I, I don't know even how to say, because so many need to hear your true teachings, not your deeply manipulated um carefully the the religions of the world have taken uh philosophies and great truths and put them into a, a an, an establishment a, a religion if you will they've taken spirituality and made it into a religion and religion does not always speak to the soul but it speaks to m the man that created it or the man that wants to be or the woman that wants to be in a group that is uh, symbolizing spirituality, but not necessarily uh, holding spirituality. Do not listen to things of these religions that do not resonate with you. The spirit speaks to each heart he does not speak to a, a building, but he speaks to a heart. He speaks to a soul. He speaks to the mind. Remember that the damage that religion has done is not the fault of spirituality. It is not at fault in some ways at all. It was, it came about by a, a need for inclusion. There's so many reasons why religion has come about, but spirituality can live inside of these religious establishments when God is speaking to the heart, when I am speaking to the soul, when the spirit is growing within each individual. I know harm has been done with, uh, with many religions because they're not inclusive, they're not loving, they're not many things, but God is. 
I am. Do not look anymore to the building and the dogma and the rules and the regulations that were made by man to keep everything in order. But look at God's rule for the heart. Do unto others as they would have them do unto you. Have no other gods before me. These are the kinds of things we need to conceptualize within ourselves, not as a building full of people and rules and regulations, but a heartfelt being outside that is looking for an inroad to be part of your life, to help guide and direct you in a very positive way that you cannot do on your own. Thank you so much. You mentioned that you are already on Earth. Can you say a little bit about that? Not much. In a physical body? I am... I'm going to refrain from that right now because it's not a necessity for this conversation. But yes, I am in a body, but that's not important right now. Okay, thank is, you so much. The spirit of God is what is important right now, that you embrace God in his truth, his love, his kindness, his understanding, and understand that he is not the judge, uh, the hateful judge that he is often seen as. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Don. Go ahead, Don. Blessings, brother. I would like to ask you, um, did you appear in the Notre Dame Cathedral this week? Uh, because, the, well, the church burned down this week. I just wondered. Yes. It is only, uh, yes, I was there. And it is only a building, even though it has great history and great spirituality attached to it. There are also some very big lies attached to it as well. Uh, there is, they say that my crown of thorns is there. They say that pieces of the cross are there. They say that relics are there that people would use to build their faith. But they do not need these fake relics to build their faith in God. Just know that God is with you. And that he can work through any piece of wood or any thorn to give you whatever justification that you need in understanding me. Do not do not be put off or do not be so involved in these fake relics that you don't see the true spirit and it, it was only a building it was only a building thank you blessings blessings thank you um david has a question go ahead david hello how are you i'm well good to speak with you again I have a I have I have a question about um, I have a healing group and somebody contacted me and mentioned some things that sounded like she was in danger and I wanted to see if you were able to give me any information to see what her if she's safe now in this situation until I can get a longer private session. Um, and uh, she mentioned uh, demons and some people have died. And I just wanted to make sure that she was currently safe. They, Do you need a name they, now? They need to be calling on the spirit for this. Okay. Because they are 
they're focused on the negativity. They're focused on the destruction. They're focused on the power of evil. And guess what? That can be reduced to nothing with the Spirit of God. God is the light that cuts through the darkness and will destroy evil, if you want to call it that. Some say negativity, some say positivity. Whatever terms you use, God is the true light and can cut through that. So send that to them. Send them the light so they can stand and look at that and feel protected by it because God is their protection. God is the spirit of protection and he will send the angels and whoever is necessary if they only would ask and believe. Beautiful. I love it. Well, it's the truth. That's what's so good. Yes. Ask and believe. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I love you, brother. Love you as well. Uh, Michelle has a question. Go ahead, Michelle. Hi. I'm curious to know, you introduced yourself as Jesus of Nazareth, and then there's also regular Jesus with nothing attached, and then there's Jesus Christ, and then there's the Christed energy, and then there's Yeshua. Is that all the same frequency, or are those different frequencies? They're all the same now. They used to be different frequencies in some ways, but now they are all the same. So basically that's whether I call you, call on during healing, if I call on Jesus or Yahshua. Yeah. This or, is basically, my whatever. spirit is in one place now. So is like Aquarian fire got a different frequency than holy fire? I mean, there's like a thousand different kinds of Reiki with different. Of course. So they do. It comes down, energy is energy. And if you call it whatever, if mm -hmm. it is the energy that is working for you, you may give it a label of any kind. Mm -hmm. As long as it's a healing energy, you may mm -hmm. use it in a very positive way. Is it, um, I guess I just wanted to know really about if the name, names that we have for you like had different frequencies. Okay. These different labels and frequencies, if you call them that, mm -hmm. are all come together. Okay, thank if you. They're all the same frequency and all the same name, or they are just a label. The spirit of God is that which you are wanting the spirit of healing beautiful truth and and love no matter what name you use if your intention is to bring down the healing from the heavens mm -hmm. from god from the true light then you are in the good in good hands yeah i i guess i don't know if it's, is it the human mind we think uh more more is more <laughs> so like if i am doing a healing session and i call on i don't know eight or ten let's say four angel four specific uh archangels and four specific ascended masters they like, all have is that necessary own. or could i just go god <laughs> <laughs> You make me laugh because <laughs> all these different energies have their own reasons for existing. Right. And God and myself, we work together and the angels work with us. And when, if you feel more comfortable to call on an angel for certain energies and certain gifts, then do so. We are not offended because we know that you are looking to the light to find your beauty and your salvation and your healing. Yeah, just, I'm just wondering if I'm making things more complicated. 
than they need to be. Simplify, simplify. <laughs> simplify, my daughter. Simplify. Right. It okay. is not that difficult. Okay, thanks. We are here, and that's all there is to it, and we can be there. So nice. Much love to you, and many blessings. Many blessings. Thank you. Um, Catalin has a question. Go ahead, Catalin. He was waiting. Yes, hello. Hello, I, I so um, uh, appreciate I'm actually uh, have the opportunity to hear you and um, observe you and connect with you. Um, I, I'm very excited about it and I have much love for you. And I have much love for you. And thank you for your patience. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all that you do when you give. And thank you for all that you do to help others. For I see in your mind that desire to be a servant. Thank you. That was all I needed to hear. And that was all I needed to say. Thank you very much. Bless you, and many blessings to you. Thank you. Um, there are some questions in the chat, if you don't mind, that we can continue. Uh, sure. Trinity has the question. She says, is it possible for humans to be born with spirits from the fourth, fifth, and sixth dimensions? Can they go back to their realm when the body dies, or do they have to go through the human process first? I'm not sure that, well, yes, first of all, yes. You come from other places, there is reincarnation. The Bible speaks about it, but yet the church has sort of poo-pooed it. But it is not for the church to do so when it is part of who we are, pure energy of and poor, pure life forces, that we can come and live eternally when you live eternally, does that mean you have to live eternally in one place? Exactly, yeah. No, it does not. It means that you can decide in your eternity where you want to go and what you want to do. So, yes, you can be born with spirits uh, from a another realm, but it is the spirit of God still. Mm. It is still God's spirit, even though it may seem different. <laughs> It may come from a different place, but once you go through, uh, once you are here in this body, yes, you must go through this body because this body is about overcoming. This life is about overcoming, and so is almost every life, is learning to overcome those things that are not so good. Learning to overcome and be the greater person. Learning to be what, who you really truly are. When you overcome all the, the, the difficulties of this life, you, you become that strong individual that is happy to be who you are. There is joy in becoming your, the person that God created you to be. Listen to that. There is joy in becoming the person that God created you to be. And when you reach that, that place where you're happy and you know that you are happy with who you are, oh, you may not be perfect, and you will not be perfect, but you're happy about who you become and what you're doing and how you're living. You are in alignment with God in his spirit of who you are and who he is with you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, this feeds into a very good question. Uh, it's from... Uh, AJ, it's, it says, how do you heal? And you address this a little bit. Um, I have an answer for this as well, but. How do you heal? No, no, wait. I 
I was, I didn't finish. It says, how do you heal past pain that someone can sustain from growing up fearful in religion? Oh, you have to remember, remember that religion and God are not the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. And remember that spirit and, and religion are not the same thing. And remember that people hurt you and not God. Thank you. Um, then uh, Jay uh, has a says. Well, I um, Karen. Go oh, forward. Yes. Before we move on, hmm. what is your answer to that question? It was exactly the same that that I I've said many times that as I grew up in my life, my only focus has always been God. And as I encountered many different people, my question was, did they have the same love for God that I did? And when I would be in a situation such as a type of church or organized uh, place, it wasn't a question ever of, do I still love God and who is God for me? But it was a matter of, does that church or does that institution help me to have more of what I want, which is God. And when the answer became no, it wasn't that I got mad at God or blamed God or thought God wasn't real. I just realized that there was fallacies and shortcomings within the institutions and I would just move on. But my love for you and my love for, you know, for wanting, my wanting to know God has never altered in any way despite the places or the people that I've come in contact with. You see, I'm glad that I asked you to say that because you said it in a very different way. And some people that didn't understand the way I said it, understood the way you said it. No, thank you. Yeah. Let, Let us me... move on. Okay. Um, Jay says, hello, brother. He says to you, I love you. What desire to do is for the greater good. Um, I have concluded that he, this is what he says. He says, I have concluded that my best counsel is myself. But what advice can you give me that will assist me on my mission? You are right. Your best counsel is yourself with the help of God. Because only you know what is right for you. And what is right for your mission. And what is the right way to proceed. What I would say to you is this, find yourself in meditation and prayer and know that God will be there with you and he will help guide and direct in every way you and your decisions and your best counsel is you and God together. Perfect. Um, Lilypad says, Jesus, what is the relationship between the soul and the spirit? The soul is what God created within you, with, within every person. He gave a little bit of himself to every living being. And all that energy in the soul is you, your God part. Your God part is the soul. And it has all your creative elements, everything every kind of energy you can imagine and your spirit is what feeds the soul during your life your spirit you bring in god you bring in the beauty of the spirit outside of yourself to feed the soul and the body and and the the personal spirit so that it can grow and be a witness to the uh, a light to the world and a witness to the world in a way that is beautiful and unjudgmental and inclusive and loving and healing and so many things so the soul is the basis of who you are god's flame within you his basic thought process for you and who you really are is in the soul that God gave you <laughs> the spirit outside of that feeds the soul and feeds the spirit uh, the your personal spirit as well 
I, I, I think it's probably said better in other ways, but I think I covered it. <laughs> I think you did too. Thank you for that. Um, then there's a question that says, um, let me see, wait, there's so many questions now. Oh. Okay, Jesus, uh, Lily Pez says, Jesus, what is the relation? Oh, no, I asked that question. Okay, Tanya says, uh, overcoming means always just forgiving the self and all others? That's Not necessarily. Mm -hmm. There may be things within you that you have to overcome. Within your own personal life, there, are th there may be things that, uh, that you need to overcome. Perhaps you have prejudices perhaps you have thoughts that are un, unclear or you feel that are negative and you want to overcome these things within yourself and yourself is where everything starts first you must um, cleanse yourself and be true and pure with yourself before you can ever forgive anyone outside or over here or over there I, I know that many of you are, are dealing with people that have hurt you or things that have hurt you, but you must cleanse from the inside first. Ask God to come and forgive you and, and cleanse you out. And then you have the ability to uh, say, I forgive you. Because truly, if you are, if you are cluttered within yourself, how can you forgive others? if you feel that you are unforgiven. Thank you. And here's a really nice question that I think a lot of people can relate to. And I think this will be the last question. It says, what do you do when you feel like you are here in life for no specific reason? You, you realize that that's not the truth. Because, let me tell you this, there are many different blinders that people put on not to see who they are. That just tells me you haven't discovered yourself. You haven't gone in to see who you really are, what your talents, are, where your talents lie, or what it is that you really want to do. I would get in touch with yourself through the spirit do some meditation and prayer, if you really care. There are many people walking around the world that don't care who they are, or if they help anybody, or if they do anything. But if you truly care about who you are, what kinds of things you can do, what kinds of positivity, or, or what kinds of things that are within you that are not being able to be seen at this time, then you can go in and find that. There are ways and means. Let me tell you this about you. I'm looking into you right now, and you are someone that is creative. But you're saying, how is that going to help somebody else? Guess what? Help yourself first. Help yourself be the true you. Be the true mindset of who you are. Be the true God person that he wants you to be. And you will be an amazing individual. And you have way more talents than you even know. As you grow and develop in God, God grows and develops in you. Yeah. <coughs> well... I, Jesus feels so strange just to say Jesus like hi Jesus, <laughs> but um, all right. I'm just a man, but I'm I'm here to give information. I give help with the spirit of mankind. Well, thank you. I would like to say Jesus, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> a little respect, um, but thank you so very much and. Uh, people in the chat have requested, and I wholeheartedly agree, that before you go, would you please give us a blessing? Um, I will. Lead us in a prayer or meditation, whatever you feel. I'm going, to, I'm going to bring a blessing to this group. 
God, my heavenly Father of love and light, thank you for being here with us today. And thank you for the information that you pour on to this planet and into the, each, each and every person. Help us to understand you in a greater and more wonderful and useful way. Help us to love in a greater and more useful way and to heal each other. Because we are here to lift each other up. We are here to become the true person that you have meant us to be. And we are here to also help others see the light and be a part of your great, beautiful influence. Thank you, my Father, for the healing that you are doing, for the love that you are shedding and spreading. Thank you for every moment of the day that we are alive, that we can live and find peace and joy and tranquility within you. Bring to us all the things that we require. Bring to us all the things that help us to be truly ourselves. For that is where the light shines out from us the greatest, is when we are truly immersed in you and in your will. Many, many thanks. Much praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy Easter to you. Thank you. And please come again. You don't come enough. Thank you. Thank you. And it was a pleasure to be here. Mm, very nice to be here as well. <sighs> okay. Good night and good day and good morning. For the world is in all transitions. Be well. Much love. Welcome back. Hello. 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 Welcome back. No, oh, thank you. Welcome. Mm. Thank you. Welcome. So. Oh, okay. What a lovely guide into uh, in next day into Easter. What a nice Easter surprise we had today. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yes, I thought that was appropriate. Yeah, it was very good. And um, anybody want to do closing prayers? I don't know, we just had sort of a really good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Barbara said she'll do one. Go ahead, and, Barbara. And Angie will do one. Okay, great. Who else? Anyone on our side? Michelle will. Okay. Michelle, wonderful, good. Yeah, All right, Barb, start us off. All right. <laughs> then we'll do announcements and then we'll go. The God of light exists in all realms and we embrace him as well. We love and cherish him and send our acceptance to you for all the things that are coming and all the things that you will be able to acquire. God be with you and bless you. Angie. Asanoluti asakanolu tu kushi anamayata i ananakutu asanani shamayato tu amaniyata tu asananiyaka anamayata.
Yana da tu asi anania taka asa ma uti ishana naka apa so tu u aniata. God is known by so many names, and He has been to so many worlds in so many different incarnations. We accept and love who He is, and we're wanting Him to be more available to you in all that you do and all that you are able to do thank you michelle go ahead May the true spirit of this season prevail throughout the entire world. No matter what the religious belief is, there is a spirit of resurrection in all of our thoughts and minds. A spirit that this, uh, a sense that the spirit is rising and that it is always alive within us. And keep this thought at the edge of your mind always so that you may recall the vitality of life in the spirit and in eternity. Thank you. Perfect. <clears throat> very so, good. Very right. good. So just before we go, just a few announcements. Uh, on the uh, 18th and the 19th, or 17th and the 18th, you have your uh, galactic energy healing class it's a saturday and sunday yep excuse me 18th and 19th then yeah from two to five from two to Eastern five standard time 111 dollars and we have a few people signed up already but if you're really interested let us know let angie know uh give us that address again a speed six four five six six four five six at gmail.com so write that down i know that there are some of you out there that have questioned about it but have not uh sent anything in or or uh done anything yet perhaps it's um, a matter of making the time available mm -hmm. but um also uh we have the workshop coming up in in august from the 8th to the 12th it will be 575 dollars there we have secured 10 double rooms two people per room bathroom in every room really nice really nice accommodations so it's not like the rustic uh place that we had before but it is uh, a wonderful place and we're very happy with it so uh we hope to see some new faces this time mm -hmm. and uh, we see we have some of our some people that have been to all of the past workshops are signed up for this one as well so awesome. that's a beautiful thing that just tells me that they're they get a lot out of it and i hope we see some new faces so they can get some stuff out of it as well and um workshop in canada and then the workshop in canada the heart and solstice from june 21st to 23rd um uh, hosted by micheline roche and it's in the Ottawa area. And if you are interested in that, it's galactic energy healing also, but with the, in, in combination with channeling, in combination with singing bowls and all different kinds of other healing modalities, 
that are uh, vibrational. It's really wonderful. Perfect. And then just to uh, let everyone know, coming up next week, we have a special guest. His name is Ruben Langdon. He is the uh, director of the program called Interview with ED that's currently running on Gaia. Uh, so far, he's interviewed uh, Bridget Nielsen, Rob Gothier, uh, Sean Swanson, Wendy Kennedy, uh, also uh, so Nora Harold, and some other people that you may or may not know. Uh, he'll be on next week. He was also, just to tell you, he's the most famous actor you've probably never heard of because he's an action and uh, stuntman. So he was the body double for the main character in the movie Avatar. He was, uh, he's in, uh, he's one of the main characters in the video game, uh, Devil May Care, or Devil Kiss 5. He does a lot of action uh, and um, where they put all the electrodes on you and he does all these flips. It's amazing. I'll, I'll put up his, his stunt reel and you, you'll be amazed, but he's an amazing guy. He does all kinds of talks on Comic-Con and all these different um, shows. And he talks about extraterrestrials and the influence that they're having in our world and also his hopes for the future. He's a fascinating, fascinating guy. So really look forward to having him. Then the, that'll be next week, which is the 27th. Then on the 4th of May, we will have Jenna Hopman. She was here before. She was a lovely Dutch channel. She did a lot of tonings. Uh, she works a lot with the Hathors and the Arcturians. Then Jim will be back on May 11th. And then the week after that, we will finally, most finally, have Rob Goth here. He's actually going to show up on the 18th of May. So Please be uh, be here for those. You can check and find all of that on the website, hukalu.org. If you'd like to become a member of uh, Human Colony and support us with $10 a month, it helps us do all of our programs, pay for our website, Zoom Room, the different programs that we do. Please go to hukalu.org forward slash webinars and you can support us. And much thanks and much love to everyone who is a member of Club Hukalu. So One last word. Laura Kurt from Australia, the Sunshine Coast, Queensland, is uh, giving uh, galactic energy healing classes. If you're in Australia and you want to do them in person with Laura Kurt, she is uh, in Queensland, Sunshine Coast. Okay, perfect. And one last thing, a big thank you to Dawn, who's always watching the, uh, the YouTube chat and posting all the questions and everything. I forget every week when we're on air to thank him, but I want to thank him on air so that. <laughs> well, and thank you <laughs> to do that. So thank you, Karen. Thank you, Dawn and everybody that helps out. I appreciate it so much. Perfect. Really so much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Oh, and one last thing. If you're a member of the keepers of the code group on Facebook, if you're not, you might want to join it. If you're interested in light language, uh, Max has been uh, facilitating a webinar every Saturday for people to practice their light language and to work on their codes. Um, if you join Keepers of the Codes on Facebook, you will see the announcements for the webinar. There'll be a webinar in just two hours starting. So please check it out on Facebook. So Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Thank Much you. love, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone.